Hey everybody, this is John. Welcome to the free video, and let's just kind of dive right in. So, uh, S and P's, of course, one day up, one day down, and we've got this pretty massive flag forming here. And then, you know, the question here is like, we've got a squeeze. So, you know, is this thing gonna explode the upside or explode the downside? And what's interesting right now is if we're looking at the news, of course, the news is all bad, so it makes more sense that we go to the downside. But then if we look at some of the key internals, like the put call ratio, they're actually more bullish. So, you know, frankly, wouldn't be surprised to see us go to the upside. And so in something like this, what we just wanna be aware of is what are the institutions doing, okay? Are they buying? Are they selling? Are they undergoing distribution? Or are they undergoing accumulation? Because if we don't you know, fully understand which one's happening, then we're gonna be caught off guard. So if we look at something like um, Goldman Sachs, okay? Goldman Sachs is full on distribution mode. Okay, so how do you tell? You know, that's a good question there. Um, what about something like Roku? Okay, Roku, of course, is just on another planet right now, and then you'll have, you know, stuff that's in between. You know, what about, say, Amazon? If I can type that in correctly, you know, Amazon, is that under accumulation or is it under distribution? How can you tell? And, and more importantly, why is it important? So one of the most important things to kind of remember is that, you know, this is a bit of a game and you got to understand the rules. And, you know, since the markets first opened, you know, whether it was a huge player like a JP Morgan or Jesse Livermore, or today it's like the hedge funds and the algos, the same cycle happens over and over and over again. There's strong, smart, and dumb money, okay? And this is the model of how it works. So there's accumulation where, um, you know, it looks kind of ugly, and so retail's like, oh, I'm not sure, maybe we should short, but the accumulation part is where the institutions are actually diving in and building up their positions, all right? And then there's the markup phase, and then generally where retail gets interested is near about here, okay? And institutions want to leave a little bit for the retail, so it's like, okay, they can actually feel like they're, they're making some money, so it's like right here, like buy, you know, and we're just keep on going. It's like, oh yeah, this time it's different, okay? And then this is called the distribution phase. And during this time, institutions are dumping stock, but they're trying to do it in an orderly way, okay? So that, you know, if they've got a million shares to sell, they're obviously not gonna right-click and sell all million at once. It's like, all right, let's sell, let's sell uh, 18,000 shares today, and we're gonna sell 200 shares, you know, every 12 minutes throughout the day or whatever it is. And so it's one of those things where it doesn't really impact the markets as a whole. It's kind of going up, it's kind of going down. Retail's buying because it looks like it's going up. And then by the time, you know, retail kind of figured out what's going on, it's it's pretty ugly. And then here is when essentially, you know, it's the most pessimistic is at the bottom. And then that's when the whole process starts over again. And so the question is like, where are we now? And how do you tell? So a big part of this is you do a couple different things. There's two things I like to look out. One is the relationship between, you can see here, this is an eight period moving average. And then you got this 21, it's kind of a VMA color coded for accumulation and distribution and then the 200 simple. And basically, and this is, you know, this is the 2008 crash and how it unfolded is that, you know, it's like, okay, and, and by the way, these are what I call the institutional train tracks. So here's the 200 SMA, you've got institutional train track number one, and then number two, and then on the downside, there's one and two. So why is this important? Generally, now this is incredibly rare, is that when you slam down into that second railroad track, you've got to cover your shorts. And in fact, if you wanna buy something there, that's fine too. That's when you get the, the, the uh, those rip roaring, rip your head off rally if you're short. It's like, oh my gosh, and then a lot of times you get here and it's like, what's going on? And if you understand kind of the flow here, and you can read this. So basically, if you've got these lined up like this, where, you know, it's, these are, you know, they're lined up like this. So two, two, 200 simple VMA eight, basically that's just pure on distribution, distribution and declining. And you short every rally. And notice here from about December, 2007, all through um, March, 2009, 
there was it was distribution the whole way okay now were there times that you could that you could buy yeah if you got down to the second railroad track you buy it because guess what we're going to go back either to the first railroad track or to the 200 so you get again get a little bit too far you're going to come back up this was you know very rare it's very rare that you push down below it that far um and then from here you can see we kind of you know got it together there So if we look at the current markets, you'll notice here that in December, okay, so here we go, we got distribution going on, distribution, distribution. You come down here to the first railroad track, boom, yeah, you're going to get the bounce back. And these are just institutional levels that they use, all right? And then, boom, when you get down here, and this is where everybody thinks it's the end of the world, and that's where you want to buy, because guess what? That's where, the, um, that's where the institutions are buying too, all right? So where are we right now? If you look at this slide, um, and this was from my class I did this Saturday. This slide's uh, about a week or two, eh, it's five or six days old. So let's look at the current chart. All right, so this is a live chart of the S&P futures. So we can go here and again, and what this is, a couple people have asked like this. This is, again, talk in the Saturday class where um, it's the, the hope and lope. So what that means is what I'm looking for is that once something makes a new 21 bar low, I'm looking for a lope or a hope play. So hope is a break above the high of the low period. So when that happened here, you get the arrow, and that shows you at least it's a confirmed bottom. And then here is a hope, a break below of the, or a lope, a break below the low of the high period. So it's a sell signal, but then you're also, you know, looking at that in conjunction with some red bars. So, you know, when you get it here, you get the red bars, boom, you're off and running. So what are we doing right now? Well, right now we're under distribution. Okay, so you've got, here's the flag, there's the 200, you can see that this has been holding, but we're still under distribution as we continue to trade below that VMA. And so it's important to understand that because then we can simply look for rallies too short. As an example, um, today, or, you know, we're short Goldman Sachs, okay? This is something where it continues to be under distribution, even with a fantastic quote-unquote rally that we had last week. Or today, Amazon was upgraded. Well, guess why it was upgraded? So the institutions could dump it on retail investors. Yet this is clearly telling us that it is under distribution. In fact, I am looking for a move to the first institutional railroad track down here at 1548. And so while these swing trades may be a little daunting, um, we also covered on Saturday this, these 30-minute charts. And these essentially, again, kind of on institutional level pivots, where essentially they look at a specific range over the last 48 hours and set up their models based on that. So you can see that we just kind of stay within this range one day and then, you know, move down to the next one the next day. And then here we are right in, you know, pinned right in between those levels today. And you can just use those levels to trade against because that's what the institutions are doing as well. All right, so what is all of this? Well, so this is the class that I taught on Saturday. So I taught it on Saturday, 831. And either if you were unaware of it or unaware of what the, I mean, because when we talked about it, we were kind of like, oh, this macro stuff. But really what we we're doing is drilling down and just giving you the roadmap that the institutions use so that we can follow them. Not only on those swing trades to see if we're in accumulation or, or distribution, but also for those institutional kind of 30 minute charts. So we can just kind of play the ping pongs back and forth while we're waiting for the next big move. So if you missed out on it and would like to do it, we're near the end of the last chance to sign up here uh, before it goes into our store. Because when it goes into our store, that's when um, that is when the price goes up. So for 4.97, you can still get a recording of the strategy class that I did on Saturday. You'll also get the quick start bonus if you're newer to Simpler and newer to my strategy. It just kind of talks about my my philosophy of how the market moves, you know, how to use the squeeze and stuff like that too. If you're newer to options, there's a 101 course. And then most importantly, there is all those tools that I'm showing you on there that are included in the workspace. From there, um, we start the live trading on September 4th. And that's Wednesday and uh, fourth and fifth. So if you do the premium, it includes, of course, all of this, 
Plus, we're going to do uh, a macro deep dive. Again, that's going to happen on September 3rd after the close, and that's okay if you're getting this and it's like, wait, I missed it. There'll be a recording, and that's really just understanding what's coming down the pipeline. I mean, negative interest rates, uh, tariff wars, basically is the economy going to implode here or not, and what are the macro trading opportunities, okay? Guess what? There's a reason why REITs are killing it this year. They're the best performing sector by far. And we'll talk about why in here and what to expect going into the future. Plus, we have two live trading days. And then the elite version includes all of that plus an additional two live trading days. All right. So if you go to simplertrading.com forward slash secret, um, it can get you teed up and ready to go. So you can kind of fully understand what's happening and what's unraveling in this market. It reminds me a lot of what happened in 1999-2000 and also 2007-2008. So you want to have the roadmap that worked then so you can use it now. All right, And that's what this class will give you. Have a good one, and we'll see you at the next update.